Wilchox did it again, a new banger lens for the Fujifilm system. This time not an ultra wide angle or a standard zoom range though. This time they nailed it with a 75 mm f1.2. Look at it. I was about to sell my Fujifilm X-H2S already, but now with this lens on top, that causes real physical pain when I think about selling it. I still want to sell it, but let's have a bit more fun with it first. I came here to film bats with the Wildshock 75mm 1.2, but as you might know, they are so light sensitive that it's pretty much impossible here because even if I put only a little bit of flashlight on them to be able to film them, they already fly away and it's actually not good for them, so I, I don't do that. I just get some random nature shots here. Now, talking about the 75mm f1.2 lens in full frame equivalent terms, it gives you about 112mm f1.8, not actually f1.8, but the same booker at least. And I think that makes this lens really interesting for people that love shooting 135mm f1.8 lenses on full frame cameras. I mean, it's not exactly the same as 135 millimeter it's about 20 millimeters difference but the look overall is very similar it's also great for portraits you have this insane booker etc and considering how small and lightweight this lens is that i think makes it really attractive for people that love such lenses the 135 millimeter f1.8 was one of my favorite lenses on the sony system before and now having something like that that small and lightweight is definitely nice so that might be a really nice lens if you're into that especially if you do portrait stuff but I'll I also find it quite nice for travel because sometimes you want to have a bit more background compression etc for certain shots but you don't always want to bring a 70 to 200 or something similar on APS-C on your travels right because they are quite big and heavy and with something like that you get this look and it's a lot more travel friendly as some of those bigger lenses so that is that is why I would also recommend that for travel and not only for portrait shouldn't be your only travel lens though. Let's talk a bit more about the performance of this lens and start with autofocus. The autofocus overall it's really good. It comes with an STM motor and the minimum focusing distance is 0.88 meters. So you won't get macro shots with this lens but for the usual portrait stuff etc what, what you want to do it's perfectly fine. I did a quick autofocusing test outside and the performance was very good overall. It was accurate, it was fast but you could see a little bit of that stepping in the background. What could be an issue if you have a lot of movement in your shots but for smaller movements it's not actually an issue so most of the time you will be fine and I overall found, found the autofocus with this lens pretty impressive. Now I know I have complained about the XH2S autofocusing system a lot in my recent videos and that was mainly for situations like here in my studio it probably doesn't like my gray walls but I've also said that outside it's always good that's also why the test outside I did not want the camera to be the limiting factor there and there I can only say that I was happy with the result overall. Of course for photography it's even better because there the stepping doesn't matter at all and considering how snappy it is it's actually really good for photography. And when it comes to motor sound you can hear the motor a slightly bit even when you have an external microphone on top. I ran a test there and I was able to listen to it but only when it's really really quiet. Like the moment you're in a forest or so where you have birds outside you don't notice that anymore and it's certainly better like this one here for example 50 millimeter 1.8 for Canon. <laughs> It's not like that, it's very subtle. When it comes to sharpness of this lens, it's already really good at f1.2, but you can increase the sharpness a little bit by stepping down to f1.8 already. That's already really sharp and reach the maximum sharpness at f2.8. And if you step down even more, the sharpness decreases from f8 until f16. But even there, it's still really good. Like I had to crop into 400% to actually see it. I would not be able to see it without cropping in. That was only the center sharpness when we're talking about corner sharpness the results are similar I would say it's a little bit less sharp as in the center but it's not like a huge difference and it's kind of the same there it also gets its peak sharpness at f2.8 and again when you step down it reduces the sharpness again starting from f8 I must say it's the XH2S 26 megapixels I don't know how this lens performs with 40 megapixels on the X-T5 and X-H2 I don't have these cameras so if you want to know if this lens is enough for 40 megapixels 
since you would have to watch other reviews about that. Let's also talk about vignetting. And to be honest, I did not test vignetting at first because I did not notice any vignetting in the footage that I got at first. But when I reviewed some of the sharpness shots that I got in Lightroom, I played around with the optical correction slider. And there I noticed that suddenly the edge just got a bit brighter. So there is a little bit of vignetting as you can see here, but it's very soft, so you don't really notice it. And it's only there until F1.8. After F1.8, you don't see any vignetting anymore. So the performance in that regard is also very good. And it's actually surprising because it's a relatively small lens with a pretty large aperture, what might suggest that you would get more vignetting. So Viltox did an excellent job here. And yes, that paper was from my Thai learning book. After living in Thailand for over three years, I finally start learning the language. It was about time. This is super complicated. Let, let me show you something. Now, here's the word my, and it comes in five variations. My, 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 my. I'm not even sure if I pronounced all of them right. Maybe some of my Thai followers can tell me. Uh, but each of those words means something different. They're all my, but slightly different pronounced. And that's actually the case with a lot of words in Thai language that makes it so hard for foreigners to learn it. Anyway, that's a new mission for me now, learning Thai, but let's continue talking about the lens. And my next point here is the booker. Overall, the booker is really smooth. I like it, but the moment you have some lights or so in the background that creates circles, shapes, you get this cat eye effect. It's actually really pronounced on this lens and it gets even worse the more you come to the edges of the frame. I mean in the photo that you see here it's pretty exaggerated with all those booker balls that you get. In most situations it's not as strong as that and that's why I think that most people will actually like that booker because overall it's pretty smooth it's just that you have this cat eye effect there. And an issue that many lenses have including Wiltrox lenses is chromatic aberrations but to be honest I ran some tests here even this longitudinal chromatic aberrations or however it's called, like shooting from the side, I could not notice any chromatic aberrations on this lens. That's probably why they call it Pro now. They finally fixed the chromatic aberrations on this lens and then considering sharpness, etc. So yeah, if you're looking for a lens without chromatic aberrations, then that's definitely one to get. Let's put the internal specs aside for a moment and talk about the body now. And as you can see, it looks super good. It's a typical Viltrox quality where the body is fully metal. The sunnot is not, but it also mustn't be. And what I like about the body is at first that it has the aperture ring at the end. You can adjust the aperture there between f1.2 and and F16, also set it to automatic if you want to. And it also has an AF-MF switch, which I actually love. I mean, it just feels right. I already have my thumb here, so I only have to move it back and switch it. I'm in manual focus. I just think it's the best way of doing that. And talking about manual focus, I set the XH2S to linear focus response. And from what I've seen, it is a linear focus response than that you get with this lens. But what I must say is that you have to turn the wheel quite a lot to be able to focus fully in and out. So I would only use the manual focus function on this lens really to do some small adjustments. But if you wanna use it fully manual, it's not the right lens for that. I would rather use it together with the AF on button that you somewhat focus in an area and then use the manual focus ring to do small adjustments to it. But don't do it fully, it's just, it just takes too much time. But there are also two downsides to this lens. The first one is flaring. I found this lens to have a lot of flaring if you point it in the direction of the sun or another light source. And that was even the case with the sun hood on. You can see it for example here with the dog in the shot right now, the uh, sun was above it and the flare that greatly reduced the sharpness of the image. Now, I personally, I like flaring on lenses. It gives it a bit of character. So maybe some of you guys like it as well. Other downside compared to other Fuji lenses is that there is no optical image stabilization in this lens. But considering that most Fujifilm bodies have inbuilt stabilization, it's not an actual issue. And when it comes to actual performance, when it's like you wanna get a steady shot, I was able to do it with a little bit of jittering there, which can be easily fixed in post. But the moment I wanted to to move the lens around a bit and it already got quite shaky. Which again, you can also fix it in post, but you wanna shoot at higher shutter speeds than it at motion blur in post, otherwise you might get motion artifacts. So overall, I 
think it's still usable, even handheld for videography, for photography anyway, that you don't have to worry. But you definitely will have a lot of shots where you have to add more stabilization in post if you shoot video. So be aware of that. And that's the only issues really with this lens. Otherwise, I found it to be excellent. So let's talk about the price. What do you think how much this lens costs? Pause the video here and write it in the description what you think because I was actually quite surprised. I expected that it would be more expensive, but still in the Viltrox price range, maybe 800 to $900. But now it's only $549. I mean, that's an insane price for a lens like that, especially considering the chromatic aberration performance. And that makes this lens a no brainer for this Fujifilm system, in my opinion, at least if you wanna have that focal range. Maybe if you wanna shoot wider, then obviously it's not the lens for you. So I think this is a must have lens for the Fujifilm system if you wanna get shots, videos, photos, whatever you shoot that have a really special look where the background is a bit more compressed and you have this insane booker. And where it also performs great is if you're into photography and you need high shutter speeds for sports, for example. Obviously at f1.2 you can raise the shutter speed like crazy. So I think for many photographers, this lens is very interesting. And if you also want to know about another very interesting Viltrox lens that actually improves the Fujifilm system overall a lot, then watch this review here in the corner about the 30 millimeter f1.4 lens and aside from that i hope you enjoyed this review if yes then please leave me a thumbs up and also consider subscribing Oop. <laughs> ah, yeah it has to be in the middle yeah, no. yeah that was good <laughs>